let's make our character hide in a locker like an Outlast. There are actually two ways to do this. One is to replace the character camera with the camera inside the locker, and the other is to actually put the character in the locker. We will do the second one. We made an interaction system in the previous videos. There is a link in the description and above. We will use the same system. I roughly modeled a locker with Blender 3D and imported it into my project. I will leave the link to the model in the description. You can use it as you wish. I opened a folder with the name Hiding. Let's create a blueprint actor here. Let's call it Hide BP. We need a static mesh. This will be the mesh we'll hide in. We'll also need two arrow objects. One is the player position, the other is exit position. The first one will represent the position the character should be in when hiding. The other one will represent the position the character will be in when the hiding is over. Now let's create a child actor of this actor. Let's call it Hide Locker BP and open it. Let's call the locker as a mesh. Of course, we will also need a door. Let's create a second static mesh. This will be the door. Let's make this a child of the existing static mesh. Now we need to position the door. There is an important point here. We need to position the arrow objects in the same position with the half height of our character. Player half height looks 88. We will make the Z location value of both arrow objects 70. Now let's position the arrows. We need to determine where the character will be located when hiding and where it will be located when hiding is over. Of course, we need to interact with the locker. In order to open the door, we need to implement the interact interface we created in our previous interaction system video. Let's go back to hide BP and implement the interact interface from the class defaults tab. Child object will use the same interface. Let's call the interact event in hide BP. We need the player character reference. We can do this in Event Begin Play. Let's create a custom event. Let's call it Move Character. Let's take player ref and call set actor transform. We need location and rotation. So let's split new transform. Let's call V interp to constant from new transform location. This node will allow us to change between two distances in a certain amount of time. We will take the location of player ref as current location. Target will be the location of the arrow object we call player position. Let's write 1000 as interp speed. For delta time, let's call the get world delta seconds node. Now we need to make the collision of our player ref false. We do this only to avoid a jam. After that, let's get the set timer by event node. Let's assign move character as the event. 
Let's choose get world delta seconds again as time. Looping must be true. Now let's test it. The timer we created keeps us in every frame. I mean, it's always updating us to force us into that position right in the locker. So let's kill the timer when we are inside. While hide is in BP, let's create a branch here. Get player ref and get actor location. Get player position, which is an arrow object. And get world location. We need to make sure that both are equal. Let's connect them with the equal node. We can increase the tolerance a little bit. In order not to have problems, let's connect the result to the branch. Call the clear and invalidate timer by handle node from the set timer by event node. We will use this node to stop the timer. We will connect this node to the true of the branch. In this way, we prevent the code from running in every frame. In this case, we also need to stop the movement of the character to avoid any bugs. We need to disable movement right after we make collision false. We're in, now let's do the work of getting out. We need a Boolean variable in the character blueprint. Let's call it is hiding, for example. Let's add a branch just after the event interact node in hide BP. We can reach his hiding from player ref. If his hiding is false, the process should continue. If it returns true, let's call the set timer by event node, and we will use the following event as the event again. Time will be world delta seconds, and looping will be true and we will use clear and invalidate timer by handle again. Now we will use a select node between arrow objects. We will use as hiding variable as wildcard. If is hiding is true, then exit position should be selected. If false, then player position should be selected. We should do the same thing for the branch. If is hiding is true, exit position should be selected. If false, player position should be selected. Now we need to set the is hiding variable. Since it is false by default, we need to set it to true when we hide. Let's create a custom event to handle it cleanly. Let's name it finished hiding. Let's call is hiding. If it is true, set it to false. If not, set it to true. If his hiding is false, we need to reactivate the character's collision and movement because we are no longer inside the locker. Let's choose walking as set movement mode. Let's call the finished hiding event after the clear and invalidate timer by handle node at the end.
Now it's time to open and close the door of the locker. We will create an event dispatcher for this. We will use this for communication. Let's create an event dispatcher in Hide BP. Let's call it Hiding ED. Let's add it right after the finished hiding event. Now let's go to Hide Locker BP, implement the event, interact. Right click and add. Call the parent function. Then we will use the interact event in the parent class, but first we will do a few operations. We will open and close the door of the locker. Let's create a timeline. Let's call it open door. Let's connect it to play from start. Length 0.25. Let's create a float track. Let's call it alpha as usual. Let's create two keys. The first one will have time zero, value zero. In the second, time 0.25, value one. For a smoother transition, you can select two keys, right click and select auto. We did the same in the doors tutorial. Let's go back to the event graph. Let's take the door mesh. Set relative rotation. Let's connect it to update. We will only use the Z axis, so let's split the new rotation. Let's connect the Z axis to a lerp. Alpha will be alpha. A will be the closed state of the door. Let's make the B value 100 degrees. Connect the parent interact node to finished. We open the door, now we need to close it. Let's create a custom event, close door. Copy and paste the timeline and the nodes behind it here. We will use the same one. Let's call it close locker door. Let's reverse the values in the lerp node. If you remember, we created an event dispatcher in hide BP. Let's call assign hiding ED after event begin play. So every time that this hiding ED is fired, which is called every time we finish moving, this custom event will be called in our locker. After this event, let's call the close door event. There is a bug if we keep pressing the interact key. Let's prevent this. So we need to disable our interactability while these codes are running. For this, we define a Boolean variable in hide BP. Let's call it can interact. Default is true. We should check after event interact in locker BP. If true, we should set can interact as false. In the closed door event, we should set can interact as true to finished. Now let's add a sound and finish our video. If you're finding value in these videos, hit that subscribe button and drop a like if you love the content and ring the bell to stay updated. See you in the restaurant at the end of the universe.